And then I was exposed to the lesbian lifestyle from family members. I had a, a really close relationship with a cousin who got into that lifestyle and from being around it, my curiosity began to be, become peak. I never really had a, a strong male figure, even though my dad was in the home, but he yeah. didn't take up uh, any time with me um, as my father. Um, I was always around women, yeah. so I had feminine tendencies. Yeah. So the young um, boys in school would often call me, you know, faggots, sissies, oh, and wow. so those words oh, wow. um, started to take root. Wow. And over time, um, you yeah, know, I started, yeah. I started acting out what right. I was being called. I've only measured the success of this ministry by the transformed life. Out with those who got your answer, get away from those who got your part. And it's so funny because when I think back now, like where I'm now, and I think about, you know, when I first got involved in a relationship, I just think about everything that was happening in my life. Yeah. Um, you know, I wasn't consistently coming to church. Um, my communication with my parents wasn't there. So, you know, it opens you up to so many things. And I think back now, I'm like, Pastor Mike tells you all the time, hang around people who have your answers, stay away from those who have your problems. And at the time, I didn't feel like I had a problem. Right. You know, I said, oh, you know, I could, I told myself, like, I could never do something like that. Yeah, yeah. And then um, you'll look up, and I'm in a relationship for three years. Yeah, You know, yeah, so right. just like that. So the decline of all of these values that you've been raised on mm -hmm. were like the threshold the introduction to all of these other things that came along with it. Yes, sir. Yeah. Mm -hmm. wow. I mean, and like you said, they were raised a very in a strong church. family. Strong yeah. family. Leaders Mothers, in this ministry. ministry yeah. uh, a part of nursery. Yeah, yeah. yeah. no, but yeah. I'm thinking of the area of ministry they were a part of was the outreach ministry. Yeah, outreach. When your parents were going out, they were over that whole department yeah. going out, getting people getting saved, people saved. And coming to church, and then to be attacked with this, you know. But it's good to make this clear and to make this point because a lot of people think, you know, because See, they're raising their children in church that they wouldn't have these type of challenges, right. and, you know, and it kind of like uh, freak us out because this isn't supposed to be happening to me. Yeah, it's challenging you know? like that. Yeah. And so for you all to be here today, I mean, I'm thanking you for all of the parents that are listening. Yeah, well, it, even the more it, it uh, raises a flag with me just because your daughter is bringing another girl home I mean it's always and going a good up thing. to the bedroom you you thinking that's just as safe as right. mm -hmm. anything imaginable you know we always say you better not take any little boys up to your room or, mm -hmm. but you're taking the little girl up there that's doing the same thing yep. to your daughter yep. mm -hmm. and you got to be watchful as parents but your mother and father saw this saw it and, and when they did, I, would, I just rebuttal everything. Like, no, you know, this is just my friend. Yeah. You know, and I, and I fought them so hard. My dad said, the fact that you fought me so hard on it, he said, you know, it made me wanted to, to push even harder, you know, because you fought me on it so bad. So. Was he loving through this? Because most of the times people are, you know, don't have the right kind of parental mm, support. support. Mm -hmm. You know, the parents, you know, how do you come home and tell your father as a boy, uh, Dad, I'm gay, I love men? Right. I, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. No, really. Yeah, yeah. Maybe you can maybe you can adjust that. But, you know, talk to this issue about your parents. Uh, kind of rate them, grade them. Did they my, I'm sure they she had got, their she got two. She yeah. got two scales. Then. She, got, she got a I'm mama sure, scale and a daddy, daddy scale. I'm sure they <laughs> had their moments. And like. I, I honestly have um, awesome parents. Yes, um, you at the do. same, you yeah, really yes, they're, do. they're they're awesome. I'm just thinking about it, you know. Um, wow. But when I first said something like, "I'm the only girl. I have two brothers," so um, I'm my daddy's girl, princess all the way. So when I told him, um, he was hurt. You know, and I, I talk to my dad every day about wow. everything. I could probably share more things with my dad wow. than, than with my mom. Wow. Um, so he was hurt, and the way my dad deals, he's normally pretty quiet. The, the first thing they did was they showed me the word. You know, my dad said, because I personally don't know what to do right now, um, so I, I have to show you was in the word. Was calm or? Very calm. Yeah, our parents uh, are very calm. Uh, 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 it was a eerie calm. Like, yeah. I was like, <laughs> I, I was like, what? Like, like, they gonna freak out any moment. They gonna send me away. In my mind, I was like, they about to put me in a van. They about to send me away somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> it's a scary 
scary call. It was scary. It was scary. Yeah. My mom was very emotional, very emotional. So um, with, with my dad, I, I feel as far as like our relationship, because my dad says like, I'm walking with you. Walk down the wrong road. I can't go with you that way. You know, he, he told me from the front, he said, so, you know, I, I, once again, he just went back to the word. So my dad, as far as, um, you know, I could tell that he was hurt. My mom was very emotional, but I still talked to him. How'd you get the nerve to, to did, did you have to I tell them? I was temporarily insane. Like, when I think back, I'm like, I, I just did this, you know, and once it was done, then, then it was kind of done. But, but was it shocking to them that they had some kind of, I mean, what prompted you? How did you, <laughs> you know, I mean, how do you go to your mom? One question at a time, <laughs> baby. <laughs> Um, well, they, uh, I was encouraged by the, by the group of people I was hanging with. They encouraged me, you know, you should tell your parents yeah. because I said, I, I, I wasn't really sure if this is what, from the very beginning, Holy Spirit was already ministering to me. So when they told me I had my ifs about it, but they were saying the best thing to do is to talk to your parents. So I went and said something to my parents. I took them to a restaurant. It was like the worst setup. I took them to a restaurant, it like ruined our entire meal. And, um, you know, I just told them, I said, you know, I'm, I'm dating Rita. My dad wasn't surprised whatsoever. He, uh, you know, he looked at me and said, um, I, 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 I felt this, like you coming to have this conversation, like you want to sit down and talk to us about something. I figured this was a conversation. My mom was, com she, like, she didn't, she didn't know it was coming. She said that she trusted me when I told her that. Wow. She said, okay, I thought maybe you were ministering to her. Wow. She said, so it, it did catch her off guard. Wow. Uh, but my mom, like through everything, the entire time I was in a relationship, uh, she was always, you know, there for me. If really? I had something that was going on, really, uh, you know, I, I, it had gone. Your mom is a trooper. See, because what some parents do, cut, cut you off cut completely. Off. She was, she was in there. She would call me in the morning times, find so out where you are. So you don't think that's the best thing to do for a parent? No. You want to go there and live that way? Mm -hmm. Just going to, you going to hell? Da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. You, you wouldn't recommend that a parent. Mm -mm. What would you recommend for a parent? The, the, the same love and the same way that you care for your child before they tell you that it's the same thing after. Not at any point that I feel her coming out and uh, like my mom would, you know, go out to dinner with us. You know, but the whole time. With you and the girl? Yep. And, but planting seeds, like the whole time with there, her being there, you know, my mom's just talking. She's just, I mean, yeah, if you know my mom, mom right. yeah. she, she's, she's just doing trooper. what she does. Yeah. You know, so she's just talking. She's trying to bring everybody she's in. She's working it. She's working. So uh, she went. Not that she's condoning it. Right. Oh, no, not at all. I see, some condoning. people think she, it's a I sign talked to her too, or day. symbol of condolences. She like said, that. I was going into the devil's camp. Mm -hmm. She said, the devil She was taking have exercise classes with me. She mm -hmm. was, you know, she, she was, was just there. trying to be there to be in her ear. Right. Because the devil is always talking. It's like, and who's it, whose voice are you going to hear the loudest? Mm -hmm. It's like, I'm not going to shut up because I need you to hear my voice even when I'm not around. Mm -hmm. You know, because the devil is with you the whole time. He's constantly talking to you. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, I need to be around. I need to be in her ear Man, so you can awful. hear my voice. Mm -hmm. I didn't, I got to just be perfectly frank with you. I, you know, you, you guys were here when I walked in for this taping and I'm thinking, I don't need to be here. I am so glad <laughs> I am here I and I'm hearing here. all of what I'm hearing. I thought this was something that she could handle. You are helping me to be able to minister more effectively to others who are challenged with this because quite frankly, I got to tell you, I don't even know how I would have responded. Mm -hmm. Oh, you would have been um, probably. I, I wouldn't have been you, your you father. Would, no, you would have been a mixture. You would have been I trying been. to be calm and then you would have escalated into the mama. Yeah, uh, I would have been like Katrina was to <laughs> New Orleans. <laughs> he would have told him something. Uh, and I, I, I mean, expected I mean, that just, from him though. Really, I mean, uh, and that's the truth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You don't know the truth, the truth will make yeah. you free. Mm -hmm. I everybody mean, but some parents, everybody, everybody has different But mannerisms. that's not mm -hmm. the best. Right. Mm -hmm. I would have recovered, I'm sure, and, you know, gained some composure mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. about it and, and sought the Lord for and an alternate route and plan. And involvement later. But for your parents to be, were, were your parents the same way? Uh, my mother was, but my dad was. Your, like, your, 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 I can see a father. Yeah. Yeah. So come on, that, that, we'll get oh, back we'll to that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's hear from a guy here. Okay. Um, my story was a little different. Um, I, I began having um, sexual um, attractions for men at the age of maybe, I would say, five or. Six. How seven. do you know that? Be 
Because whenever I was with, whenever I would, would play with God with, with little boys, yeah. I would, you know, I would find myself doing things I knew I shouldn't have. Right. But right. now, right. I know I shouldn't right. have. Right. <laughs> right. 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 But um, but it, but you know, a, a, over time. So you were know, you raised in church? I was not raised in church. Okay. Okay. But what happened was um, at a very early age, uh, my family was split up because my because of domestic violence, and so we were sent to my grandparents' house. Oh wow! And there was an older cousin there. Yeah. And so my older cousin would um, sexually abuse me at night because I would have to sleep with him. Mm. See, a lot of this stuff. I hear from that a lot. Those from kind of abuse. episodes. Yep. That's yep. not your story, uh, however, Jennifer. No, that's not my story. But I hear it a lot. Yeah. That that was like the. The door. The door, the introduction. Mm -hmm. Well, go ahead, Carl. And so um, I always felt like something was wrong with that. and. When I finally got enough nerve to, to stand up for myself, um, I would go to, go to bed with nails, knives, whatever, whatever I Come could to, to kind of fight him off. Mm -hmm. And so um, then once, he, once I fought him off, one day I came in and I caught him on top of my little sister. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. And so his words to me were, if I can't have you, I have her. So then I've always been a protective of my little sister, so I gave myself to him wow. to protect my little sister. Mm -hmm. And so, um, Whoa. wow, that's yeah. That's... And so it, that just went on for a very long time. And then, um, then when my f family got back together, um, I kind of like put the whole experience behind me, and um, and just went on and tried to live as normal as I could. And then I, I guess I just kind of like subconsciously forgot about everything, and then um, tried to you know be this normal guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, and I did date women. Um, so what's normal now though is because now we got the new normal. Yeah, that's right. true. You know when you say normal, people can objectively, you know, oppose it. I object that normal. What is he saying that we're not no? You, you, you know, in our society today we. We got to watch all of that and, yeah. and know precisely who we're ministering to, who we're talking to, and, and that whole image about you're being abnormal mm -hmm. for being this way is, is unacceptable. You, you know what I'm saying? Like, like the challenges I had and have with just women, the temptation of that, am I not normal? Am I abnormal? To, I, I hope you all understand what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, we understand. Because when, when you make these uh, uh, comments, what's normal today? And who sets the rules for normal? Mm -hmm. Right. You, you, you follow what I'm saying? Where do we get abnormal and normal from? Is, is one... Is, is, is one not accepted above the other? And are we biased or opinionated or discriminating uh, in some regards to people who, you know, when you say I try to live a normal life, what, 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 do, you, what do you mean by that? Well, I, I guess I would, I would say for what I was used to seeing. What mm -hmm. you like, knew. Yeah, right, for what I know. Right. I, I knew, especially where I was born and raised, where I'm born and raised, you don't see Men and men and women and women. Okay. It, it's, it's, it's male Can and female. Can I ask where that is, born and raised? Yes, um, South Hill, Virginia, on the borderlines of North Carolina. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You don't do that then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Especially at that time. You right. know, during that time, um, they're coming out more now. But um, normal to me was man and female, male and female. Right. And so um, I wanted to be that because, like Jennifer was saying, no one wants to be um, teased. And because... Um, I never really had a, a strong male figure, even though my dad was in the home, but he yeah. didn't take up uh, any time with me um, as my father. Um, I was always around women, yeah. so I had feminine tendencies. Yeah. So the young um, boys in school would often call me, you know, faggots, sissies, oh, and things. Wow. And so those words oh, wow. uh, started to take root. Wow. And over time, um, you yeah, know, I started, yeah. I started acting out what right. I was being called. Mm -hmm. And so, um, but again, I couldn't understand it because I always had females. I always had girlfriends. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. even acting feminine, I always right. had girlfriends right. or women that were attracted to me. Right. And so um, I well, did date. you're a nice-looking guy. Yeah, you're a nice-looking yeah, guy. Thanks. Yeah. I think. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. If you must say so <laughs> yourself. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But, um, yes, um, you know, so I did date women for a while, um, 
and just felt like I never could get it right, you know. And so um, I was introduced to the to the life to the lifestyle right. through a magazine. Oh, I dialed a one eight hundred number uh, in a um, come on in a, in a magazine and yeah. um, called the guy up. We talked. I actually went. So to this was a magazine that promoted homosexuality. promotes homosexuality. Yes, and you can find hookups. Yes, get out yes. like a, a dating social mm -hmm. networking system. Yes, wow, I am so. Uh, because at that at that time sheltered, I'm <laughs> so, I, I, I I've never even heard of anything either. as such. Yeah, it's a lot out there. Mm -hmm. It's a lot out there. Yeah. Okay, all right. So at this time, you know, I'm you know I, I'm I'm on my own, doing my own thing. I'm getting from under my parents' roof, so I'm exploring. You know, I'm experimenting. I don't I no longer have to uh, be afraid of coming out. So when I I, I came out. Um, they introduced me to a club, and once they intru introduced me to the club, I was like, wow, this is where I should be at, you know? So I, did you feel like you men, fed, felt more men, right? I felt more accepted. Yeah, that's, okay. what, that's yes. what I want to know. And like, there was no condemnation, no yeah, put down. you could fit no. in. Yes, mm -hmm. I, yeah. I, I could just fit right on in, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and the attraction, yeah. the attraction that I was getting, um, the, attention the, attention, that, the, right. I mean, the attention that I was getting right. um, was overwhelming. And yeah. Um, I believe when I when I left home, I was like, "Wow, that was a wonderful experience." So I went back the next day, yeah. and so the next day turned into you know mm -hmm. going every week, wow. weekend, yeah, and yeah, so, yeah. Um, you know, and so it just got you know caught up in it. And then what, what what really changed my life was I wanted to change my whole identity at that time because I was really losing myself to the lifestyle, wow, to the point to where now I'm I, I believe I'm born this way. And that I'm a man, a woman trapped in a man's body. So okay, you have got you went that far with it. Yes. Okay. And all of that came about with me hanging with the wrong crowd. Yeah, you're accepting of, all of what they're saying exactly. and what you're feeling, and you're just going with it. Going with it. So now I'm I'm thinking, okay, how can I change my whole identity from being a man to a woman? Come on. So you know now I'm cross dressing. Yeah. And I'm even looking into, okay, how can I make myself look more softer and, yeah. you know, and that whole thing. And so right. I'm, 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 the devil is lining everything up. Yeah. Right, right, right. You know, so I'm, I'm coming in contact with people who got everything I need, everything I want to get. And so I'm, as, then at some point I just took a stop. I was like, wait a minute, hold up. Something ain't right with this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, how do you feel that, though? I mean, you've been carried away so rapidly and so fast. How do you feel, oh, wait, stop? What's 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 that all about? Is 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 just this inner conscious? Is that would you say God? What's 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 the hold up? I mean, well, at the time I couldn't explain it, but now today I know it's God. I know it was God, uh, and mm. and you know because I'm okay. Yeah, with where I'm at, mm -hmm. right. I'm happy. Right, so mm -hmm. I thought. So, right, mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. I'm happy. You know um you know I'm 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 starting to feel more accepted. You know, I no longer um, have to hide who, who I thought I was born to be. Yeah. You know, um, but the one, one of the thing, another thing that really um, kind of, you know, tore, tore me was the separation from my parents. Wow. You know, my family. Wow. You know, because in the lifestyle, you kind of like pull away from everything. Yeah, that you got to make a decision. With. Right, you know, and so. Then were your parents godly people raised in church? No, they weren't. And today, I But realize, to lose your family. To make a decision for the lifestyle is also sometimes making the decision to lose your family. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that's a lot why of parents do. gotta know. They gotta stay there. Gotta stay there. Keep loving them. It doesn't mean you're condoning. Right. right. The lifestyle it simply means you're gonna love them mm -hmm. through whatever they're involved. In. Because I I have to say even though say Naja's dad may not have gone out like her mom to be a part of meetings, she could always still she was always welcome to come home and was accepted and embraced by her dad. He never treated her, you know, any different. Like, you're Man, we got to grow daughter. up in the love of God as right. believers. We do, we? we do. Now, I did have a, a godly aunt, and she knew what was going on without me even telling her anything. And she had a talk with my mom, and she told my, my mother pretty much what was going on with my life. And she said, don't you dare turn your back on them. And so uh, when I did finally come out to my mother, you know, of course, she cried. And she you you like, talked to your mom and dad or just your mom? 
I, I talked to both of them. Okay. Um, like I said, my mom handled it. She was very emotional. My dad was like, you faggot, you baby. Oh, wow. He just went, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. but him well, and I. And that's not to put him down. Right. right. You know, because the first thing we want to do is attack them. But, I mean, that's not what we raise our sons. Right. That's not our dream, That's our not vision. Our dream. We had something it, else for you to be. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. We and, want and that's, that's totally selfish kids, and unfair. Yeah. But you know, you're looking at what we've considered to be the norm. Mm -hmm. Now it's transitioning, and we may not be equipped to handle the kind of news that we're getting. Mm -hmm. you, you, you know what I mean? Yes. Wow. So when the church thing start, when did you? No, well, he got to get back to when he, he, <laughs> he, he was at the place where he had to step back because he was about to cross a line he was that he was uncomfortable yeah. with. Yes. So at this point, um, I'm having these, the, the, these thoughts about, okay, this is wrong. Something is wrong with this, about this. And um, I'm like, okay, and if I go all the way with this, there's no turning back. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, and then, and, I, and, and it's funny because most of my friends were like, "No, that's not funny." I'm not funny. <laughs> my, my friends at that time were like, "I don't think that's gonna really fit you, babe, because you're too hairy. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you have to go through a lot of, you know, uh, getting rid of the facial hair." Yeah. And so, but you know, but to to be serious about it, um, I just really started to feel really convicted about things, and I can't understand why because I didn't have a relationship with God at the time, you know, but um. Wow. He had a plan, you wow. know, and so wow. um, So even so, I stepped back from the story. I said, well, you know what? Maybe I won't go all the way, but I wasn't really, I wasn't ready to give up the lifestyle. Right. So I became what they called, um, I wasn't DL or undercover. Okay, okay, okay. But I was able to look like a, right. a straight guy. Right. But I still had those feminine tendencies. Right, right. And I was still from time to time. Um, you know, want to be, you know, a little bit more feminine than, right. really, than what I was. Right. And so I would do things to, you know, to, to, to pretty much accommodate that. Mm -hmm. So um, I met, I went to church one day. And when I went to church one day, um, I, don't, I can't remember what the pastor was even talking about. Right. All I can remember. That, tell me that was my church first. It was not your church. Okay, good. good. <laughs> not the pastor. He would have yeah, said yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, the pastor, yeah. The pastor. Yeah. Make sure he remember what I was saying. Right. <laughs> We're going to have well, a quiz actually, for you on right. Sunday. <laughs> well, what happened was I was, I, was, I was laying in bed, and it was, it was during the winter months, and it had been snowing, and I just felt like I needed to go to church. And that was strange because I would go to, I don't go to church, you yeah, know. Yeah. And so um, I was like, and I didn't even know where a church was at, at that particular time because um, I had just moved to this particular area. And I know today that it was Holy Spirit because all I can remember was getting my clothes on, putting my clothes on, and just started walking. And I kept walking and kept walking until I got to a church. And I went inside the church, and I, all I can remember was standing up and just crying out to the Lord. Wow. And um, so that was my turning point. And then I would say some, some weeks later, I was at the metro station and I was sitting under, under a tree and I was reading a Bible and a lady drove by and she's like, hey, I know you. you I saw you at my church. And so she invited me to um, come to her house for din dinner one wow. Sunday. Wow. Uh, and from that point, she took a great interest in me and right. she... She was That's like, you that know discipleship what? That's the discipleship. Yeah. She said, you know what? I want you to come and live with us. No. But she never told me that she knew what was going on with me. Mm. So, um, wow. Wow. Getting emotional when yeah, I think yeah, about yeah, it. Yeah, right, because right, right. A lot of the leaders at that particular church knew what was going on with me also, and they tried to convince her to not let me live there because she had a son. And wow. so she said, no, I know what Holy Spirit has told me. He's coming to live with me. So she, she, can't, she allowed me to live with her, and she was basically like my units. And mm. she taught me, you know, how to pray. You said your units. Yes. yes. Okay, yes. I just wanted to make sure yes. that everybody understood you. She taught me how to pray and how to get into the Word and read it, study it for myself and um, develop a relationship with Holy Spirit. Um, and from that point, that's when I started to, uh, transition 
And because I wanted it so bad, and I even had a talk with God, I said, God, okay, if this is going to be real, then we're going to do it all the way. Come on, and so come on. He had me to actually look at men in a godly way and mimic them, how they walk, how they talk, yeah. how they carry themselves. Come on. Because I was gone. Yeah. I was, I mean, I was done. I mean, right. you're talking about somebody's wrist that was broke. My wrist was broke. And I had a switch. But I can love laugh it. about it today, but yeah, I, yeah, you yeah. were to see it, it was you. But this is the this is what I'm talking about. Yeah. This is the the entire this is what this I mean, I don't care how far you have gone. Join Apostle Frederick K.C. Price and Dr. Betty Price, along with Drs. Michael and D.D. Freeman of the Spirit of Faith Christian Center and Dr. Anthony J. Heron and Mrs. Stephanie Heron of the Grow to Go Christian Center, located at 870 Pershaw Road, St. Louis, Missouri, for its Central Regional Conference, October 25th to the 26th, 2012. Our speaker Thursday evening will be Dr. Michael A. Freeman of the Spirit of Faith Christian Center in Temple Hills, Maryland. You've come this far by faith and you will continue to go by faith. There will be a special church development session for pastors and ministers with Dr. Freeman Friday morning, a Fig Wolfham Fellowship Luncheon Friday, and Apostle Frederick K.C. Price of the Crenshaw Christian Center on Friday evening. Jesus did not say that I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly and then you not have it. Call 800-727-1374 or visit our website at figwiffham.org. Your husband's still asking you to have children? Yes, and I told him he is not man enough. Wow, you shouldn't have told him that. When did you start practicing the ministry of shut up? when I read Dr. Mike's book and it told me to think before I speak. This book will direct you through setting up order in your relationship. It's also a great gift for family and friends. What's the name of that book? Marriage Made Easy in 31 Days addresses points such as communication, household guidelines, and visions for your home. For the price shown on the screen, you can get this book today. Give us a call at 1-888-630-4540. Pastor Michael Freeman will be teaching at the following locations on Thursday, October 25th and Friday, October 26th at the Fifth Witham Regional Meeting at Go to Grow Christian Center in St. Louis, Missouri with Apostle Frederick K.C. Price. Marriage Made Easy Howard County on Friday, November 2nd at Spirit of Faith Christian Center, 8430 Glenmar Road, Ellicott City, Maryland. This is the last Marriage Made Easy meeting for 2012 in the Baltimore, Washington metropolitan area. Doors open at 6 p.m., service starts at 7 p.m. On Tuesday, November 6th and Wednesday, November 7th at Southern Baptist Church with Reverend Clarence E. Williams in Brooklyn, New York. Please contact us for more information, 301-630-3733 or visit our website, www.spiritoffaith.org. The proceeding was paid for by the friends and partners of the Living by Faith broadcast.